For section 3.5, it can be broken down into parts. Part one that you just watched went over how to solve by graphing. But you're asking yourself, how can you solve a nonlinear system of equations without graphing? Is there an easier way? Well, there is the algebraic way. And to solve systems, normally we have two methods. We could use substitution or elimination. So that's what we're going to use today. The first couple examples are going to use substitution. The second two examples are going to use elimination. But overall, you can use them interchangeably. It doesn't have to be a specific type of graph. So x squared plus x minus y equals negative 1, and x plus y equals 4. Now the first equation has an x squared in it, which means it is a parabola, which means it is a quadratic. The second equation, though, has no exponents. So when we have an x and a y, what that means is that it is linear. Right now it is in standard form. Now, in order to use substitution, we need to rewrite one of the equations and substitute it in the other. Now, I'm going to pick x plus y equals 4, and the reason being is because it looks a lot easier to work with. So, to start with, I'm going to rewrite that in at y equals mx plus b by subtracting my negative x over, so or my, or my x over. So, I get y equals negative x plus 4. Then I'm going to take that negative x plus 4 and substitute it into my first equation where I see y. Be careful with that negative in front. Now the way I get around that normally is to put parentheses around whatever I'm substituting. Now I'm going to get rid of my parentheses by distributing a negative through the parentheses. Thus yielding x squared plus x plus x minus 4 equals negative 1. I'm going to combine my like terms. I get x squared plus 2x minus 4 equals negative 1. And I'm going to set it equal to 0 by moving my negative 1 over to the other side by adding 1. Now it's just a math problem. So I have three, ver three values, which means I can't use inverses or can't work backwards. I could complete the square. Half of 2 is easy, but 3 is not so easy. Um, so I could factor because factoring is always easy. There's factors of 3 that give me 2. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use x plus 3 and x minus 1. Now you've done this either by grouping, trial and error, or box method, depending on the class you're in. Now we set each factor equal to 0. So we set x plus 3 equal to 0, and we set x minus 1 equal to 0. We solve those two math problems. We get x equals negative 3 and positive 1. Now, since this is the substitution property, we're not quite done yet because we need to find out what our y values are because it's x and y. So I'm going to pick the easier of the two equations, which is equation number 2. And where I see x, I'm going to substitute in negative 3. And then I'm also going to substitute in 1. So I substitute my negative 3 in, and I got 7. I substituted my 1 in, I got 3. So my answers to the math problem are, when I substituted in a negative 3, I got 7, so negative 3, 7. And when I substituted in a 1, I got 3, so that became 1, 3. So without having to graph, I could tell you that this has two points of intersection. Let's try another example. Example 2 looks a little more difficult. The first equation is still a quadratic, maybe not in the form you're used to, but it is a quadratic. The second equation is linear. Now you can use substitution or we'll talk about elimination. Now if you want to, even when you have two quadratics, you can use substitution. You just have to be careful with it and combining your like terms. So these can be used interchangeably. We're just going to do another one using substitution. So to start with, I'm going to rewrite my equation in y equals mx plus b. I get y equals negative 2x plus 5. I'm going to take that and substitute it into my first equation where I see y. I am then going to distribute that positive through, which is not going to change any of the signs. I'm going to combine my like terms. I'm going to maybe factor factors of 5 that give me 1. Well, there are none. So I have two options. I can complete the square, or I could use the quadratic formula, and they can be used in interchangeably. 
Now, completing the square may not be the best of options because when we take half and then square, we're going to probably end up with some fractions. So let's just use the quadratic formula. Remember, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So my a is 1, my b is 1, and my c is 5. And I substitute it in my equation. Once I've substituted it into the equation, I simplify and I get negative 19 inside the discriminant. Well, we learned that a negative 19 in the discriminant means that it's going to have an imaginary solution. So if we're thinking about graphs, an imaginary solution means these graphs are never going to intersect. So in conclusion, there is no real solution to this problem. If you end up with a number, then sure, you could substitute back in and find an ordered pair. But if you end up with an imaginary, then the answer is no real solution. This line and quadratic or parabola will never intersect. Now the second method, as I said before, was substitution. So I'm going to do this with two quadratics. But you can do this with quadratics or linear. It does not make a difference. Now, the reason why elimination doesn't look too bad here is because the equation is already negative y and plus y. Normally, when you eliminate, you're going to want to get rid of the y's. Now, I could have rewrote my second equation and substituted it in and distributed it in combined like terms and all that fun stuff, but I'm going to keep my life simple and I'm going to eliminate. Remember, that is the process where we add down. 2x squared plus 1x squared is 3x squared. Negative 5x plus 2x is negative 3x. The y's will eliminate, and negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. Now I move everything to one side, and I say, okay, maybe I want to factor it. 3 times 2 is 6. Factors of 6 that give me 3, there are none. Well, I could complete the square. Okay, but I have to get rid of the number in front, which is a 3, so everything would divide, but I'd end up with a 2 thirds, which would get kind of messy. So I'm just going to use the quadratic formula again. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I substitute that in, letting a be 3, b be 3, and c be 2. I simplify. 9, 4 times 3 is 12, minus, um, times 2 is 24. So 9 minus 24 is negative 15. Once again, I have an imaginary. Since I have an imaginary, there's no real solution to this math problem. Let's try one where, where you'll actually, actually get a solution. This one, I have two quadratics. I could rewrite one as y equals and substitute it in and combine like terms, and that's fine if it doesn't require for you to use this certain method. Um, but since negative y and positive y are going to cancel out, I'm just going to add down and cancel. 2x squared plus 1x squared is 3x squared. I have a 4x to combine nothing with the second equation, so plus 4x. My y's will cancel, and actually my 2's will cancel as well, leaving me 3x squared plus 4x equals 0. Now at this point, you might freak out and be like, oh my gosh, what can I do? Well, we have options here. We have two x's. So we could factor, we could use the quadratic formula, but c would be 0, or we could complete the square. Now, completing the square may not be the best option here, because if we divide everything by 3, we end up with 4 thirds 4x, which is not going to be fun to divide by 2 and square. So I probably would throw that one out the window. So my two options are quadratic formula, which I could let c be 0, or I could factor it. Now this one looks pretty easy to factor. They both have an x in common. So maybe I'll just factor out an x for both of them. Well, that looks pretty easy to do. If I do that, it's basically factored. I have x and then I have 3x plus 4. When multiplied together, it gives me 0. So those are factors. So all we have to do is set each piece equal to 0. Once we've done that, we solve. We get x equals 0 and x equals negative 4 thirds. Well, I got my x values, so I know that the answers are not imaginary, so I'm going to have to substitute back in. Well, I could pick equation 1. Yuck, 
Or I could pick an equation two. It looks a lot easier to work with. I'm going to pick equation two. So then what I'm going to do is substitute in zero and negative four thirds where I see x and x squared plus y plus equals two. So I do that. Zero squared is zero, so y has to be two. Okay, but the right side we have to square it. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. 3 times 3 is 9, so 16 ninths. Use my brain or my calculator and subtract over my 16 ninths. Well, that leaves me with 2 ninths. Okay. When I put in a 0, I got a 2. When I put in a negative 4 thirds, I got a 2 ninths. So there are my answers to my math problem. So they intersected at a nice pretty point at one point in time. But at another point in time, they were not so pretty, and you probably would not have been able to graph it and figure out what those were. So I hope this is helpful. Remember, you can use elimination or substitution interchangeably. Um, the easiest way is when you're substituting, set 1 as y equals and substitute it in. If it's eliminating, use a positive y and a negative y. And if one's not negative, multiply the whole equation by a negative. And then add down. If you end up with an imaginary solution, that means they never intersect. If you end up with a number, you plug it back in and you find the other values. I hope this has been helpful. Now let's get to work.